Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachinery.org. Um, so first off, last week, man, I can't tell you how many emails, uh, phone calls, text messages, uh, Facebook comments, uh, YouTube comments, etc., etc., etc. I had from folks wanting to make sure that I was okay because I didn't post a video last week. And guys, it just came down to the fact that uh, things have just been so crazy the last few weeks. I told, I've already told you several times that for whatever reason, um, April always seems to be just crazy for me. We've got stuff going on with the family. Uh, it's a really busy time at work. Just didn't get a video posted. I apologize. I know you guys keep saying you don't have to apologize for it, but that's what's going on. I just didn't have time to do one. Uh, but we're back this week. Uh, still don't have a lot of shop content because, again, I just haven't had time to get into the shop. Uh, but I do want to put together an odds and ends video for you. Uh, we've had lots of pretty cool things coming in the mail, uh, some viewer gifts, uh, this, that, and the other. Uh, I want to give you a shop update. We actually got some stuff to talk about down in the shop. Uh, and really and truly, a lot of my spare time that I've had over the last uh, month has been focused on getting my electrical work done in the shop. Good news is we had our electrical inspection actually uh, earlier today and uh, everything passed. So we're ready for the power company to come out and hook up the, the electricity. And that's uh, a load off of me and hopefully will allow me to start uh, getting back in the shop and doing some other stuff. So let's uh, do viewer mail first and then we'll go do the shop update. So earlier this week, um, I was actually traveling with my job uh, and I was actually down, had to make a run across the panhandle of Florida. So Tallahassee, Quincy, Florida, Defuniac Springs, or however you say that. And then I ended up in Pensacola uh, for the night. And uh, usually that I'll have to do that a couple of times a year. And uh, when I do, uh, I always try to hook up with uh, my buddy Adam Booth down there, A-Bomb 79, that many of you guys know. And it worked out. I was actually able to stop by and see Adam uh, at work, where he works at, at Motion Industries. And then later that evening, went out to his shop. So got to see both his workshop, uh, where he works at. And uh, then we've, we spent a little bit of time just chatting or whatever at his uh, home shop, which I've been to several times now. But um, part of my reasoning, well not reasoning for going over there, but part of the reason I wanted to hook up with Adam is, is that I had a couple of things for him, uh, which I'll let him talk about on his video. And he also had a couple of things for me, some stuff that some viewers had actually sent to him that was for me. And then he had something for me as well. So I want to kind of go through that first and show you what all we got. So I'm going to zoom you in here and let you see what's going on. Sometime back, I shared with you guys, I picked up this uh, nice, uh, tap and die set, Greenfield uh, tool, tap and die, little giant set uh, that I got off of eBay. And when I got it, uh, this was, uh, I had two sets. One was for coarse threads and one was for fine threads. This was a fine thread set. And it was missing the three quarter uh, fine thread uh, die. And when I showed that, Adam told me, hey, I've got an extra one. I want to give it to you. And uh, I, we, I knew that we were going to be getting together, so he's just been hanging on to it. So uh, while I was there, Adam uh, was kind enough to give me this three-quarter 16 uh, die, which pretty much completes uh, this uh, tap and die set, screw plate set here, uh, which was very nice of him. So that was one thing we got. And another thing while I was there, Adam uh, gave me some of his new channel decals. Uh, so when I get my new shop when I get moved in out there and get everything set up. I plan on getting a whiteboard or something uh, where I can put all these decals that I've got from all the different channels. So I've got a bunch of these that people have sent me over the last couple of years and I really just haven't had a place to, to display them. And that's something I really want to do is I want to get a place where I can put these out and uh, share some of the other channel decals uh, from other viewers or other, other YouTube creators uh, like a lot of them are doing. So anyway, that's going to be coming in the new shop hopefully soon. The other items that I picked up from Adam uh, actually were a uh, viewer appreciation gift that came from Mark Schweider. Uh, Mark uh, had some uh, arbors that he wanted to send down and he was talking with both Adam and myself and uh, Adam and I were comparing notes as to who had what and who needed what and uh, Adam got a couple arbors and he had a couple for me as well. And uh, just to save on some shipping, uh, Mark shipped everything down to Adam because I knew I was going to be making a trip down there and uh, uh, instead of him having to ship them separately to me. So he sent me two uh, arbors for the horizontal mill. Uh, both of these are 40 taper, 
uh, which is uh, a little smaller than what my mill really takes. My mill takes a 50 taper, uh, at least on the main, um, the main machine. Now my, my uh, vertical head that goes onto the, the mill, when, I, when I'm using the vertical mill it, or the vertical head, it uses a 40 taper in the vertical head. So like this here, is a, this has got a uh, Jacobs taper on here for like putting a drill chuck on. So this will probably end up getting a drill chuck put on it and I can use it in my vertical head for drilling on the horizontal mill, which is really nice. He also had a one inch arbor with a 40 taper and um, Adam was needing, he had a short one inch arbor and Adam was needing that. I really already had one. So I said, hey, just send the 50 taper one to Adam. He had this one. I said, well, I'll go ahead and take it. And the reason is, is I have uh, this uh, 50 taper to 40 taper adapter. So this is the 50 taper that goes into my uh, mill, but it has a 40 taper on the inside. So you can actually take this, put that in there and use 40 taper tooling on your 50 taper machine. So anyway, that's a nice little uh, piece to have. Uh, got this, uh, who sent me? One of my viewers sent me this and it's escaping me who right now? It'll come to me in a minute. Uh, because he sent me a bunch of arbors. Daggum. Anyway, uh, I got this, so this is going to really make it where I can use either of these uh, in on the the uh, the horizontal mill. So pretty cool stuff. Thank you, Mark, uh, for sending these along. And uh, as always, these will get used. I really do appreciate it. Um, you know, I'm getting pretty well tooled for my horizontal mill. There's still a few little things I'm trying to, to wrap up and get a, get out there, but uh, really got a good, nice selection of, of tools and tooling for that horizontal mill now. So thanks, Mark. Next uh, box here is another pretty cool uh, assortment of things that uh, came in uh, as a gift. And this is, I guess, really kind of a combination gift from both Lincoln Electric, as well as my good buddy, uh, Jim Bollinger down in Florida at Do Right Fab. So Jim uh, has a pretty cool YouTube channel. If you haven't already, you need to go check it out. Uh, he does uh, a lot of welding and fabrication type work. Uh, Jim is an instructor, uh, part-time instructor, I think, uh, for Lincoln Electric. Goes around and does a lot of welding classes and whatever in addition to kind of his real full-time job, I guess. Uh, but uh, Jim talked to the folks at Lincoln Electric and they were kind enough to put together a little care package to send me. Uh, I'll be getting a welding unit down there in my shop when the time comes uh, and uh, I'm gonna need a lot of this stuff. So uh, this is pretty cool. So one thing I wanna mention about these items is is, is uh, kind of tying back into the Bar Z Summer Bash that we've got coming up in uh, June, uh, June 25th out at Stang Zinkowski's place in uh, Rancho Cucamonga, California. So in a, uh, Jim was actually able to get several items like this, and he also sent some of this exact same stuff out to stands that are going to be door prizes at the Barzy Summer Bash. So if you're going to the Barzy Summer Bash, some of these same things here that you're going to be able to possibly uh, win as door prizes in the raffle out there. So but anyway, what they sent, uh, got a nice pair of, uh, these are some, um, you know, thin, uh, like TIG welding gloves, and man, they, I have a big hand and a lot of times I have a hard time finding a glove that fits and, and these fit just perfectly. So these are for doing, you know, more delicate work. He, some more leather gloves here. Jim told me that he really, really likes using these uh, uh, for really most work that he's doing now. So, uh, and these fit me very well. Uh, also, he sent along a, uh, a shirt here. So this is a shirt that I can, uh, long sleeve shirt, basically I can just put it on when I'm out there in the shop. This I'm really excited about because down here in South Georgia where I'm at, it's hot most times of the year and a lot of times I'll find myself out, particularly when I'm at the museum, uh, I need to go weld something real quick and I don't have a long sleeve shirt because you just don't wear a long sleeve shirt down here nine months out of the year. <laughs> and sometimes even in the winter time you're not wearing a long sleeve shirt. So this is something that I can keep and uh, just throw on when I'm getting ready to do some welding. It's kind of an overcoat, so that's pretty cool. And, you know, also sent along a nice uh, digital uh, electronic, whatever you want to call it, uh, welding hood here, welding helmet, uh, really nice. This is a uh, 2450D series, uh, Lincoln Electric uh, welding hood. Uh, looks like a really nice unit. Uh, and uh, of course this is the auto darkening, so 
when normally you can see through this and then uh, whenever the, your arc flashes it just instantly um, shades it uh, so it's really convenient compared to the old style where you have to you know raise your hood up look at what you're doing close your hood down uh, and then go to welding so uh, i'm really excited about having this so this is brand new it came with a bag to put it in jim sent me some of his stickers to put on the helmet or wherever jim will display those somewhere and then uh, also i see he had a little sticker kit that comes with the helmet that lincoln puts out so you can customize this put your name on it whatever uh, i think there's some extra shades to go in the front or so pretty nice little setup here so jim uh thank you also lincoln electric thank you uh looking forward to using all this stuff and uh, looking forward to getting a, a welder down here in my shop and when the time comes uh i'm gonna be talking to jim and uh seeing about probably getting me a lincoln electric uh, MIG stick welder and probably also a TIG welder to go down into the shop. So uh, thanks a lot, very much appreciate it. So next items here come from uh, Bob R up in uh, Rotterdam, New York. And Bob sent along a couple of items here. Uh, it's pretty cool. So first off here's a couple of uh, tapered reamers in different sizes and configurations. So uh, here, we'll pull this one out. So, you know, and a lot of stuff I'm doing, you guys are probably, if you watch my videos, you see me on multiple times. Uh, have to do repairs or whatever you got taper pins and uh, for a taper pin you have to ream out a taper hole and uh, for that use these tapered reamers so got a couple of different sizes of uh, tapered reamers here uh, i've got a little uh, box where i keep all these in and have them all organized so i'll put these in there i don't know if i have these sizes if not i may have some extras here but still you know these are things that when you use them they get dull they break so it's nice to have a few extras even if uh I have one or two of these sizes, but I'll put these in with my other ones. And, uh, you know, these are all look like they're in excellent shape. I'm not even sure that they've been used. Uh, so anyway, pretty exciting stuff there. The other thing he sent along was a little catalog. This is from the EW Bliss company, uh, which made, let's see, power presses, uh, press metal machinery, automatic uh, can making machinery, drop forging machinery, and special machinery. So these guys made all kinds of... Uh, you know, metalworking machinery. This is a catalog, let's see, from 1922. It's a little pocket catalog and has, you know, all kinds of uh, information in it. So this is also pretty cool. And what I'm going to do with this is what I do with most old catalogs and manuals and stuff is this will get scanned, turned into a PDF file, and I will post it up on the vintagemachinery.org website. And I really haven't talked a lot about the VintageMachinery.org website. I know you guys see that as part of my title, but we have a whole website out there that has a ton of information on all kinds of old vintage machinery, uh, metalworking machinery, woodworking machinery, uh, steaming gas engines, uh, you know, a lot of different stuff. Uh, and a lot of what's on there is old uh, literature and stuff from these different companies. And people will scan that, upload it to the site, and basically share it where other people can view it. And we probably have, I don't know, six or 7,000 um, PDF scans of various catalogs, manuals, etc. So if you're ever looking for information on an old piece of machinery, you know, go check out my website. Uh, it's very likely uh, that we have something up there that could help you out. And uh, also, I would say, if you have any old literature, go check out the website, see if we have it. If we don't, uh, see about getting it scanned and uh, you can actually scan stuff and upload it yourself. Uh, or if you need to, uh, uh, you can contact me or one of the other volunteers on the Vintage Machinery site and we can scan that and upload it to the site. And it's just basically a clearing house where people can go find old information. We don't charge anything for it, it's a free service, uh, but it's just a place where people can go get information. Uh, on the old machinery. We also have pictures of old machinery on there. We have where you can upload pictures of your machines in your shop. So if someone's working on restoring something, they can find some examples of pictures of uh, either mach restored machines or machines in use, or even sometimes, you know, a machine found out in the wild that's not in very good shape. But still, it's, it's helpful to be able to find examples. There's a lot of historical information on there, histories on the company, old, uh, articles from old periodicals there's uh you know different uh, scan pictures just all kinds of information on, on vintage machinery so go check out the website if you haven't before and uh, submit some catalogs and manuals if you got stuff on your machines 
uh, so that other people out there can have access to it. Next box of goodies here comes from uh, my buddy Jack Hoying up in Ohio. And Jack is a many time contributor to the site, sending down little odds and ends to me, and, as well as uh, uh, sharing uh, emails back and forth and what have you. Jack's actually become a good friend. Uh, we've actually had a chance to meet uh, on one occasion. And, but he had a couple things he wanted to send me. Uh, number one, we got a set of casters here, nice big heavy duty casters. Uh, he suggested I make a little rolling cart uh, for the new shop, uh, which I will probably do. Uh, in fact, I kind of already had planned on doing something like that, to put stuff on and roll around in the shop from one machine to a little a work table or whatever. And also sent along some twist lock plugs. Uh, he said, as I'm doing my electrical work out there, those might come in handy. So, so we've got one here that's uh, for, I think, 30 amp three phase. And then these are uh, both uh, single phase uh, 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 plugs. These have the, both the receptacle and the plug on these. So uh, anyway, a, a set. So anyway, Jack, thanks a lot. And uh, I like the idea of the cart. Uh, that will probably be a project at some point in time. Uh, and we'll have this little cart we can roll around the shop. All right, shop update. Uh, we got a good bit of electrical work done. So by the way, I know people will comment, you probably see the little dog running around back here. That's Gracie, that's our little puppy. She normally is in the house, but she's out running around the yard this afternoon. And uh, usually when Gracie's running around, uh, Josie stays hidden. So you probably won't see the cat in this video. <laughs> but anyway, back to the shop. Um, got my electrical pretty much done. So uh, been working on that pretty intensely, or will at least in all my spare time pretty intensely the last month or so, a little bit of the time. Come home, work an hour or two, uh, weekends, what have you. So I've got all my wire run. I think I was doing some math the other day. We got probably a little over a half a mile of uh, wire in this shop, which uh, kind of blows my mind. Uh, and it just, it, it just took a while, particularly with me working by myself and uh, when I was on the ladder having to move around and all that. Uh, so uh, anyway, we got everything pretty much done now. Uh, I've had the electrical inspection done this morning. Uh, I do have some lights on in here. Actually right now I'm cheating a little bit. I've uh, got an extension cord plugged into the panel uh, where I could kind of test everything out. Uh, so don't have the electricity truly hooked up yet, but we do have at least where we can turn some lights on here. And uh, the power company should hopefully be out here in the next week or so and get us truly wired in so we'll have a good 200 amp service in this uh, in this shop. Uh, last weekend, I guess, it, was it last weekend or weekend before last? Weekend before last, actually. I rented a scissor lift and came in here and did all the stuff up high. So working on getting the lights up here, running all the wiring up there. Uh, also wired in, um, fixtures for ceiling fans so I can put some ceiling fans in here at a later date went ahead and got all that wired in uh, rented that scissor lift had it basically picked it up on Friday afternoon had it uh, for you know probably four hours on Friday afternoon I worked out here and then Saturday and Sunday both probably spent about 10 hours uh, both days just in here doing electrical work and uh, that got most of it done so uh, anyway we're we're making progress uh, on that, um, you know, there'll probably be a few little things I'll have to put in as necessary on the electrical stuff, but for the most part it's done. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, also, I've got this in the shop more or less cleared out and uh, probably the next thing I'm gonna do, and I think I mentioned this before, we're gonna get the pressure washer in here. We're gonna wash down this floor, um, get all the tire tracks off. I got some oil spots in here from when we were working on it and moving some machinery around. I want to get it cleaned up real good and we're going to put a sealer on the floor. I'm not going to do epoxy or anything like that. I'd love to do epoxy, but I mean, with the amount of square footage, it's just, it's cost prohibitive to me. I can do the sealer, uh, spray it on. It's going to be probably 300 bucks to buy the material to do that. And uh, I think that'll really help, uh, help the floor hold up as well as, you know, if I, if I spill oil, particularly on the machine shop side or something like that, it's not going to soak into the concrete. I'll be able to wipe it up. So uh, excited about getting that done. I'll probably, I'll probably do this half of the shop over the weekend. I'll have to pressure wash it. Uh, it'll dry out pretty quick. Uh, we're, you know, down here in South Georgia where I'm at, we've already actually hit 90 degrees 
Uh, we're pretty much been in the upper 80s, I think, almost every day this week. So, uh, you know, we'll leave some doors open. I got an exhaust fan up in the top, probably turn that on, and uh, it won't take long. It'll dry, dry out in here, and then we can get in here and uh, spray on uh, the finish uh, or that. And once I get this side done, uh, basically move everything that's in the back of the shop to the front of the shop and repeat and do that back there. Uh, been getting a lot of questions about insulation. Uh, my plan is on that, and I haven't actually talked to anybody about this yet, uh, contract or whatever, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the, the spray and insulation in here uh, for a couple reasons. Number one, it's, it's a lot more efficient. The stuff really, really works well. Uh, I've used it, we've actually used it out on, our, on a uh, metal container that we have out at our research farm where I work at, and uh, just amazing how, how much insulation just a, an inch or two of that stuff has. So. Uh, and then two, uh, the, doing all the fiberglass work up high, I'd have to rent a scissor lift, it'd probably take me no telling how many hours, the itching and everything with the fiberglass. And again, the, 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 the blow-in foam stuff is just so much more efficient. It's a little bit more expensive, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. So um, once I get the floors done, we'll contact someone about that may have to wait a little while on how much that's going to cost and uh, as I've mentioned before I'm kind of paying as I go now so we may have to save up a month or so but that'll probably be the next big thing that we do in here is get that insulation in the ceiling. Um, once that's done I'm going to go ahead and probably put a ceiling in here uh, some type of material over the, the top to kind of finish out the ceiling and then on the sides I'm going to put in LED light fixtures. And I'll mention on these, I, I showed you these uh, metal, these uh, lights that we've got in here before where I had the shades. I actually built the fixtures. I uh, bought all the parts, uh, built the fixtures from some salvaged uh, shades. Uh, probably got, what have I got, 16 of these uh, lights in here. And, you know, I probably have, I don't know, 15, 20 bucks per light in parts, and that's including the bulbs. And I put in a, uh, it's got a regular socket light bulb, but I, instead of using a traditional light bulb, I got LED uh, floodlights in these. So each one of these lights in here is, uh, I think it's an equivalent to like a 100 watt floodlight, uh, but with the LEDs, it's only drawing 17 watts. So, and it's a daylight uh, light, which is a more white light, which I really like in the shop a lot. So I'm, I'm excited about that. It's really lighting up in here a lot even without the fixtures on the side. And once we get the ceiling done, I'll put fixtures up on the two sides. I got a couple of light bulbs hanging up in there just to kind of fill in some spots temporarily until we get that done. So that's kind of where we are on the shop right now. Uh, still a lot of work to do out here. And uh, I'll be working on this off and on uh, until we get it all done. One other thing I want to get to you and show you, another viewer item, uh, viewer mail item that came in that's actually down here. It wasn't up yonder, it's a little bit heavy. So let me get it out and show you this because this is really cool too. So this is a piece that came in the mail this week uh, from viewer out in California, Tolly uh, Duchovny, and I apologize, Tolly, I'm probably butchering your name again. And for that, you have my apologies, but Tolly is also another long time, uh, very dedicated viewer on the channel. Uh, he comments all the time, I hear from him all the time. and. Um, kind of feel like we've become friends just from all the interaction we've had over time. And uh, Tolly sent in uh, this rotary phase converter to me. This is a, a three horsepower commercial made phase master rotary phase converter. And he'd heard I was gonna use a uh, rotary phase converter power three phase convert uh, single phase to three phase in my shop. He said, this is something he had he's not using. and. Uh, wanted to send it in to me. So, uh, Tolly, I greatly appreciate it. And uh, I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk a little about uh, options, I guess, for converting single phase to three phase and uh, how I'm planning on using this. So, I was doing some counting earlier today uh, as I was thinking about this video and, and, you know, how many machines I'm gonna have in here. So, I think I've told you guys before, I'm gonna have both woodworking and metalworking uh, machinery in the shop and I'm going to divide it in two halves and have a, a parting wall in between to keep the dust out of the machine shop size. Uh, in my woodworking shop, I actually am pretty well equipped. I've got a lot of machinery. Uh, some of it you guys may have seen in some of my videos. Most of it you probably haven't because a lot of it's in storage right now. Uh, but 
between my woodworking machinery and my metalworking machinery uh, that I have currently own and is either here or in storage somewhere, I think I've got 16 different three-phase uh, machines right now, and that will probably grow. Uh, in fact, I can guarantee you it's going to grow. Uh, almost all of my machinery, both in the woodworking and metalworking side, is all uh, old industrial uh, three-phase machinery. So I'm using a lot of three-phase power or, or need a lot of three-phase power. Now, in reality, uh, I probably will very seldom have more than one machine on at a time because there's only one of me and uh, you know, you're usually not going to be running multiple machines. Sometimes I may run multiple machines if I'm doing something in two different places. Like if I got a job set up on the horizontal mill that's going to take 10 minutes, I may go and do something on the lathe while it's doing something else. But besides that, you're really only going to probably have a machine or two running at a time. So my plan is, is I'm going to use rotary phase converters to create three phase and then I'm just going to wire the shop for three phase. So uh, now after we got all this single phase wiring done with just receptacles and stuff, I'll come back in. I'm actually going to put in a three phase panel. Uh, we'll probably run conduit and whatever to the, the uh, outlets around the shop that we can plug our machinery into. Um, and it will be wired just like I had commercial three phase coming into the shop, even though I don't have access to that uh, out here where I live at. So I've gotten a lot of questions. Well, why are you using a rotary phase converter compared to uh, a variable frequency drive? Because there's been a lot of talk recently on different channels about using BFDs, variable frequency drives, to generate uh, three phase from single phase. And guys, I'll tell you, I love BFDs. I've actually got two lathes, two wood lathes. Both of them have BFDs on them. And uh, both of them at one time or another, I've had running off a of single phase. Uh, right now, they're both running off a of three-phase because I, I've got my shop, or even my little shop up here, I've got three-phase wired into it. So with a VFD, you can either feed in three-phase power directly to it. When you do that, uh, it, it's, uh, it gives you a lot of options for things like variable speed, uh, motor braking. There's a lot of stuff you can program into a VFD uh, that's very nice. So on my wood lathes, you know, I've got a little potentiometer on there, and I can vary the speed of the wood lathe. Uh, just using the variable frequency drive. Uh, a trick you can do with a VFD is, is you can actually feed it in with single phase, 220 volt single phase, and put a jumper between uh, one of your single phase legs in the third leg on the three phase, and it will convert that single phase to three phase. Uh, it does this because in the variable frequency, the whole purpose of a variable frequency drive is being able to vary the frequency of the electricity, mostly usually running at 60 hertz, and that's where the variable speed comes in. So if you change the frequency either above or below 60 hertz, it will speed up or slow down a three-phase motor. Uh, now, in many cases, you may not be using that variable function. You're just using it to convert to three-phase power. But it does this by taking the, the input power, converting it to DC, doing some magical things with electricity, and then converting it back to three phase and splitting out the three legs where they're properly balanced and getting the frequency where it needs to be. So because of that, you can feed in single phase. It doesn't matter whether you're getting a true three phase feed into it or not. Uh, and it's, very, it's a very easy trick to use. You know, If you've got a milling machine in your shop and you want to run it on single phase, Put a little VFD on there, and it's a great way to do that. Why am I not using VFDs in my shop? Well, again, I've got 16 machines right now, and they all have different motor sizes on them. I've got machines that run anywhere from a two horsepower, three phase motor up to a 10 horsepower, three phase motor. And uh, because of that, uh, you really, ideally you would have to need a, a, a VFD on almost every machine and that starts getting expensive. So when you start getting multiple machines, the rotary phase converter really starts making a lot more sense, unless you're needing to do something that you need a, the other functions of a variable frequency drive. Also, when you get up to the bigger motors, uh, the cost of the VFD starts to get prohibitive. And, and one thing that I think a lot of people don't understand about VFDs, now, when you get up to a three horsepower VFD, you can order it from the factory, uh, for single phase input, and it comes to do that. And when they do that, that when you get by a three horsepower VFD uh, was for single phase input, it is set up where it will deliver out enough power to power a three phase uh, or three horsepower uh, VFD. But if you're using a three phase 
input VFD, which if you read the directions, most of the time they'll tell you not to do it, but it'll work. And people do it all the time. Uh, but it's very difficult to find a VFD for something over three horsepower for single phase input. Uh, so, but when you do uh, the whole VFD trick, and because you're feeding in with two legs of power, and just because of some things that are going on inside that VFD, uh, when you're using the three phase input, but you're only putting single phase into it, uh, you basically have to derate the horsepower of that VFD by about 50%. So if I've got a five horsepower motor that I want to run a VFD on, I need a 10 horsepower VFD to do that. And now you start talking some money. It's starting to get expensive. Can you run a five horsepower motor off of a five horsepower VFD with single phase input? Yes, you can. But the caveat is, is because of the, the derating and, and again, the 50% factor, it's a rough factor. There's some variables involved in that. It may not be exactly 50%, but that's a good value to use. But when you do that, you're gonna lose the horsepower that's gonna come out of that motor. So if you are using a five horsepower VFD, single phase input, you're only getting about two and a half horsepower of actual uh, power out of that motor, unless you have a 10 horsepower VFD. And again, I don't know enough about the electronics to explain to you why all this happens, but that's just the way it is. That's the way it's been explained to me. And uh, I know some pretty smart guys that really know VFDs inside and out, and they'll tell you this. So uh, if I got a 10 horsepower machine, which I've got, uh, I'd have to have a 20 horsepower VFD to do it. And then you also have to run real heavy gauge wire with lots of amps to those machines to hook those VFDs up on. Whereas with the rotary phase converter, you know, a five horsepower three phase motor, I can run, you know, just normal 12 gauge wire to it and it's plenty big enough. But if I have to run um, 220 to it with uh, the high amps, I mean, you got a lot of money in wire, you got a lot of money in electrical breakers and all that. So for many machines in the shop, the bottom line is, I think a rotary phase converter is a better option. And that's the reason I'm, I'm doing this. So uh, I totally sent this one along. This is a three horsepower. I have in my other shop, which will be moving down here, I have an, another VFD. It's actually a homemade one uh, that um, is capable of putting a 10 horsepower motor on. I actually only have a seven and a half horse on it right now. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take that one up there that has a seven and a half horse motor on it, idler on it. This one that has a three horse idler on it. I'm going to hook them both up, feed both of them into the panel. And depending on what machine I'm using, I can turn on one of the RPCs, rotary phase converters, or the other, or both to be able to run the machine I'm running. So if I'm only running a small machine, I can just fire up this three horsepower VF or phase converter and uh, it'll run just fine. If I'm using a five horsepower machine, I'll probably kick on the seven and a half horse. It's gonna use a little bit more electricity, but that's fine, that's what I need. And then if I'm using a 10 horsepower machine, I'll turn them both on and you know, I'll have enough uh, horsepower to run what 11 and a half horsepower. So I'm covered across the board there. So that's my game plan uh, on my electrical in here. Uh, these phase converters, these rotary phase converters, they work great. And again, uh, if you're looking at three phase options, don't rule out the VFD. It is a good option. And for a lot of people, it is probably the best option. In my situation, because of the number of machines I'm running and some of the horsepower requirements that I have, a rotary phase converter, I think, is a better option for me. All right, guys, that'll be a wrap. Uh, thank you guys for hanging on with me here and uh, watch another episode of Odds and Ends uh, with any luck. This uh, weekend, I'm planning on spending some time in the shop and uh, getting back on some project stuff. So we'll hopefully have some more shop projects coming to you in the near future. Uh, over the next few months, my game plan is, is when I have time, I'm gonna probably split about 50-50 doing work in the shop here, working on the shop here, doing whatever needs to be done out here and about 50% of my time working on projects, uh, mostly out at the museum. And uh, we've got a, a pile of stuff that needs to be done out there. And I've actually gotten behind the last uh, few uh, months with the shop stuff going on. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for your subscriptions. Thanks for all your comments. Uh, just another quick word. I think uh, I should have hit, I didn't look this morning, probably by the time the video posts, we'll have hit 60,000 subscribers on the channel. So that's another big milestone for me. And also uh, probably by the time this post, uh, we will have hit 
uh, 9 million total views of uh, videos on my channel. So another big milestone. Both of them just kind of line up together. So we were right on the verge of both of those yesterday. So uh, should be hitting those in the next day or two if we haven't already. So thank you, thank you, thank you all you guys uh, that uh, watch my channel, dedicated to watch my channel. I love hearing from all you guys. Love all your comments. Keep them coming and keep on watching. Thanks a lot.